If you know anything about me on this channel, I don't like to speak about news or fear monger because learning to code and breaking into tech as a beginner is already difficult enough as it is. You need to learn the technical skills, interview prep, apply to jobs. And there's no point in me making your journey harder than it already is by fear mongering you with AI or the job market or all of these different things just to get views. I like to keep my videos as practical, step-by-step -step and actually value-based as possible. But it's come to my attention that a lot of you guys are losing motivation and you're wondering whether learning to code and trying to break into tech is still worth it in 2026 considering the advent of AI and the job market and how it's supposedly crashing. You're seeing everyone online quit software engineering and you're wondering whether you missed the gold rush and that this is it. And it's funny because the way I see it and when I speak to other senior engineers, we all collectively agree that now is probably the best time ever to be getting into coding. And I don't get how you guys don't see that. So in this video, I want to give you guys my perspective. I want to show you through stats, logic, and just facts, not emotion, not fear mongering, not playing on your feelings. By 2026 is literally the best time to get into coding and software engineering. So I've got a full presentation here on my screen with stats, statistics, and the whole nine yards. So we're going to jump over to the screen and get started with the video. All right, guys, jumping straight in here. Why 2026 is the best time for you to learn to code and get into coding. And just before we get started, if you're wondering what are my credentials, why should you listen to this random person on the internet? Hey, my name is Ayman. I went from working a blue collar job in a warehouse to transitioning into an $80,000 coding job in under six months of learning with no degree or any coding experience. And no, I didn't do this in 2020 or 2021 when the tech job market was booming. I did this in 2023 when the tech job market was worse than it is now. I've also interviewed at massive companies like Canva and have been recruited for dozens of six-figure coding jobs throughout my career. And not to mention, I've also helped dozens of my students learn to code and break into tech in this harsh tech job market. So if there's anyone who knows anything about helping beginners break in tech in this harsh tech job market, it's me. So jumping straight in, the first reason why 2026 is the best time to get into coding is that people are quitting, which means less competition. Look, if you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably seen a ton of videos like these popping up on YouTube where people are calling it quits, leaving their tech jobs, leaving software engineering. And the reasons why people are leaving is for a wide variety of reasons. For some people, it's the fact that the job market is a lot more competitive. For others, it's the fact that AI has come out and it's being hyped up as this massive thing that is going to replace all coders and software engineers and the entire workforce. So that's also causing a lot of people to quit. And the people who are quitting coding because it's no longer the trend are hopping on to the next big thing that's come out. So that's AI side hustles, AI automations, AI agents. I'm sure you've seen a ton of these videos popping up on your YouTube or they're simply just burning out and leaving tech entirely. So the point is we have a lot of people leaving the tech industry. The amount of software engineers or people trying to become software engineers is going down. Now, the second point is that the learn to code age has come to an end. So there's no more hype. I mean, if you were on TikTok or Instagram or any social media platform during 2020 and 2021, I know for a fact you remember all of these day in the life videos where people were promoting this crazy tech lifestyle of working at Amazon, working an hour a day, earning a six figure salary, building to do apps. And the truth is that age is over. So the days of just being able to build a to do app or a weather app or a calculator app or a Netflix clone, and then put that on your resume and land a six figure job at Amazon. I've come to an end, right? That was from 2010 to 2020, 21, when the economy was absolutely booming. Interest rates were low. Companies were just hiring anyone who could write a single line of code and had a pulse. And people were getting into coding like it was some sort of you know, crypto or get rich quick scheme, which it, which it never was supposed to be in the first place. And the reason this is happening is not because coding is dead and companies don't need software engineers anymore, even though they're building more and more software products every single day. And more and more of the world is moving over to software every single day as well. But it's just because the cyclical nature of the economy. Like I mentioned before, the reason why there was such a massive demand for developers during this time was because of a combination of factors. But the biggest factor was the fact that interest rates were low, the economy was doing super well, these tech companies were able to take out loans for very, very cheap. But post pandemic, when the interest rates rose up, companies stopped throwing money at absolutely everyone. And this resulted in not just the tech job market going down, but the entire job market. You see, people think that the job market is strictly competitive right now or, or strictly bad right now in the tech industry. But if you take your head out of the sand and you just look around, we're in an economic recession. Everyone is complaining that it's hard to get a job. So if you think you can just leave tech and go to another field and easily find a job, you're in for a rude awakening because the entire economy is screwed up right now. We're going through a post pandemic correction, but people are too caught up in the moment. And the coincidence of AI coming out at the same time as uh, us going through a period of economic sort of 
turbulence is messing with a lot of people's heads. So as a result, a lot less people are getting into coding. So this means self-taughts are learning to code less and less. Universities across the world are reporting that graduates are leaving or even just completely avoiding CS or tech degrees. So not only are people leaving software engineering and coding, like I talked about earlier, less people are actually trying to get into it. And like I mentioned earlier, the hype has moved to AI agents, AI automations. That's where everyone is going now. So that's why you see all of these coding influencers peddling and uh, selling a AI automation course or an AI agent course. Learning to code is no longer the trend. Now, the third factor is that the AI bubble will burst. All of this AI hype right now will result in a massive, massive correction. So it's really easy to start dooming and think that we're all screwed when you see these massive tech CEOs like Mark Zuckerberg saying that mid-level engineers will be replaced by AI or Microsoft CEOs saying that 20 or 30% of their code is written by AI. But you need to look deeper than the surface and sort of think about okay why are they saying this what's their incentive and when you actually look at it you realize that hey most of the people who are saying this have companies that build and sell AI products. So it is in their best interest to hype up AI, make it seem like this magical thing that is absolutely going to revolutionize the world because that way their stock goes up, their investors are happy, they get more investors and that's more money in their pocket. And on a quick side note, most of the people who you see dooming or talking about AI and how it's going to take over are either building and selling AI products themselves, whether that's AI courses or AI products, just like those CEOs, or they're being sponsored by these AI companies to make these posts. So I'm sure you've seen a ton of coding influencers in the space getting paid thousands of dollars by these AI brands to speak about AI, the importance of it, why you need to use AI, why AI is this next big thing that is going to change the whole world. And again, they're getting paid for every single post that they say that. But the statistics tell a very different story. First things first, what you need to realize is everything that is happening right now surrounding AI is perfectly characteristic of what we call a bubble. So a bubble is when this technology or new thing comes out, it gets overhyped, the media runs with it, the news runs with it. People are pouring money into this thing like it's the end of the world. And eventually the value of this thing gets so over inflated that it just eventually bursts and everything comes crashing right down to the way it was before. And Sam Altman, the literal CEO of OpenAI, admits that yes, AI is a bubble. It's being overhyped. And guys, my favorite saying is in order to predict the future, the best thing to do is to look at the past. So let's think about all of the other bubbles that occurred in the past. The dot-com boom, website builders, no code, low code solutions. But the big one I want to talk about is the web three slash crypto slash NFT boom that we went through very, very recently. So in 2020 and 2021, and I'm sure you remember this, people were going absolutely crazy about Web3 and crypto and NFTs and talking about how, hey, if you don't get into this now, you are going to be left behind. Everything's going to be moving to Web3. Everything's going to be moving over to the blockchain. Mark Zuckerberg poured tens of billions of dollars into the metaverse. I mean, he literally changed the name of the company from Facebook to Meta because of how sure they were that everything would be moving online invest in NFTs. This is like Bitcoin in 2008. And again, everything that's happening now happened then as well. Investors were pouring a ton of money into these Web3 startups, these blockchain startups, these NFT startups who are obviously overhyping this technology to obviously get more investments. Companies were also paying thousands of dollars to crypto and Web3 influencers to make videos about this stuff and hype it up, just like people are paying coding influencers now. And everything was the exact same. The fear mongering, the emotions, playing on your feelings. But just a couple years later, what happened? Well, quite frankly, everything just went to shit and the bubble burst. Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse came crashing down, which we all swore was going to be the next big thing. NFTs lost all their values and investors went broke. And we're seeing all of the same characteristics popping up with AI now. Things are not going to change that much. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying AI isn't a useful technology and that it hasn't changed the world. But just like with Bitcoin and Web3, which were also useful technologies, the changes that we saw as a result of these technologies weren't as big as people made it seem. Yes, people use crypto for payments or to sort of invest in. And I don't think people even use Web3 anymore. I, I don't remember the last time someone actually has built a Web3 project or that I've seen a Web3 application. And just like with AI, people are hyping it up to be this next big thing that it's going to change the world. When in reality, it's probably just going to be a intelligent search engine that, that basically just makes the process of finding information a lot easier. But because people don't understand this, vibe coders, as people like to call them, are using these LLMs 
without having a solid understanding of the fundamental concepts of coding. And they're writing a ton of garbage code, which creates a lot of technical debt. So I have a statistic here that shows that since the advent of AI, the rate at which development teams are having to rework and refactor their code is going up significantly. And these stats are from 2024. I can imagine that things are even worse now. And just to show the consequences of what happens when you don't understand the fundamentals of coding and rely on these LLMs to write code for you is this example here. So this guy is a solo developer who built out his own software as a service, completely relying on AI technologies. And at first he was able to build it out, but as soon as he launched it, random things started happening. People started figuring out how to bypass the subscriptions. His app started breaking down. And obviously since he's not technical, it's taking him longer than usual to figure this out. And if just one solo developer building a SaaS is suffering the consequences of garbage AI code, imagine the thousands hundreds of thousands, millions of full-fledged software companies that will face this same problem in the coming years because of this AI hype. And when their code becomes super bloated, super unreadable, and the AI hype dies down and they realize that, hey, the code that AI writes is kind of garbage, they will be too far gone at this point and will have tons of technical debt that someone is going to have to go in and fix. And not someone who doesn't understand the fundamentals and uses AI. No, this is going to require someone with real software skills. So if you stick around long enough, you're going to find that in the next couple of years, the demand for skilled software engineers is going to shoot up. But because of all of the AI hype that is happening and less people going into the industry and more people leaving it, there will be a massive gap in the market. So I smell a huge opportunity here. If there's going to be less software engineers and less people getting into the industry, but more and more software products being built, and I don't even need to prove this to you. This is common sense. You'd be lying to yourself if you didn't look around and think, yeah, the world is becoming more and more digitalized every single day, more and more software products being built. And the software development global market reflects that, right? It's expected to go up to $1.5 trillion by 2033. And because a lot of these software products are going to be built on AI garbage code, we'll eventually reach a point where there will be super high demand for skilled software engineers, but there's going to be a super low supply. And it's in that vacuum that you will really start to cash in and see software engineers doing really well. And we'll see this play out over the short slash medium term. But honestly, regardless of how the tech industry is doing at the moment, what we need to do is sort of just zoom out. We're so stuck in the day-to-day. -day. We're so stuck looking at how things were in 2020 and 2021 and 2022 that we never actually take the time to zoom out and actually look at the real trend. So not just look at the small contraction that we're going through right now here, but actually look at the long-term prospects and the long-term direction of the tech industry and software engineering jobs. And as we can see here, even though we're down a little bit from the peak here, just 1.7%, we're still so much higher than we were in 2020 and 2018 and 2016 and 2014. And you'd be a fool if you told yourself, okay, yeah, things are just going to come crashing down. Coding is over. Despite the fact that software products are being built every single day. People told people not to get into coding in 2020. Look what happened. People told people it was impossible to break into tech as a self-taught with everything that was going on in COVID and companies don't want to hire engineers. And anyone who had listened to that missed out on a golden opportunity. So don't make the same mistake again. Equip yourself with the skill and prepare for the next boom. And I want to end this video with a quick quote from Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world. And his biggest piece of advice to be successful is to be fearful when others are greedy and to be greedy when others are fearful. So what that means is while everyone is being super greedy about AI, they're telling you how this is the next big thing, how this is going to replace all coders and software engineers, you have to be wise and see the bubble for what it is. Don't go into AI automation. Don't go into AI agents because I promise you in the next two, three years, these things are going to come crashing down and everyone in them is going to switch to the next trend or hop on the next thing that comes out. And while everyone is super fearful about coding and tech and saying how it's going to be replaced by AI or that the job market is horrible and all these layoffs are happening. You want to be greedy. You want to equip yourself with the right skills. So when the bubble eventually bursts and other people are scrambling to learn the coding skills, you're already equipped and ready to take advantage of the demand that will be there. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. But if for any reason you've made it this far into the video and you're still doubting or questioning my advice, let me know when you're consistently landing your students high paying coding jobs and we can have a conversation. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want a free training on everything you need to learn to code and land your first coding job in this market, watch the free training that's about to pop up on the screen now. And of course, if you want one on one coaching to land your first coding job in the next three to six months guaranteed, apply to join the coding bootcamp with the first First link in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.